Mobilizing our patients is instrumental in their recovery and therefore is a really important part of our job. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper body mechanics needed to maintain personal and patient safety and to avoid injury when mobilizing patients. The key to avoiding injury while mobilizing patients is to maintain proper spinal alignment and posture. More specifically, maintaining the three major curves of the spine, the cervical curve, thoracic curve, and lumbar curve. There are nine techniques that you can use to maintain safety and avoid injury when mobilizing patients. First is plan and prepare. Evaluate the patient's mobility, level of consciousness, ability to communicate and follow commands. Is the patient fearful or unpredictable? Can the patient help? Make sure the bed is locked and at the proper height for lifting. Next is get help. Make sure you have the right number of people for the job. Get a good grip. The draw sheet is one way to do this. Make sure you have a proper stance with your feet wider than your shoulders and your back straight. Keep the load close to the body. Maintain correct spinal posture, keeping in mind the three curves of the spine. Communicate with both the patient and the team. Use your legs as much as possible. Finally, stabilize the patient. Leave them comfortable and with their call bell. Hi, Mrs. King. How are you? I'm okay. Is there anything I can do for you? Um, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable like falling down in the bed. You do look pretty low in the bed. Let me get some help and then we'll come in and boost you up, okay? Okay. Katie, can you come help me, Miss Mrs. King? Sure. This is Katie, she's here to help Hi. me lift you. <clears throat> We're gonna flatten out your bed and then get it in position to lift you, okay? Can you check to see if the bed is locked? Oh, sure. Yep. Thank you. Yes, it is, thank you. Can you put your hands on your chest? We're going to use the sheet underneath you to lift you up in bed. Can you put your chin to your chest? And if you're able to, please lift your knees and see if you can push off with your feet to help us on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Note how the providers in the video communicated clearly with the patient and each other. The bed was raised to an appropriate height so that the providers could avoid reaching and twisting. The providers kept their stance wider than their shoulders, used their legs, and kept their backs as straight as possible. You will now see two different techniques used to roll a patient. The first example will show an assisted roll in which the patient is able to help. Note how the provider places one hand on the patient's hip and one hand on the patient's shoulder. Let's watch. Hi, Mrs. King. I'd like to turn you over onto your side. I want to get you off your back. You've been laying like that for a while. Would that be okay? Sure. Do you think you could help me? Yeah. By reaching over to the side rail and pulling yourself over? Mm, yeah. Okay. I'm going to just lower your head down. There's the bed. All right, I'm going to take your blankets down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to reach this arm over to the side rail. Pick your left leg up, bend your knee, put your ankle into the bed, and you'll give a push. Yep, bend that knee up, good. And on the count of three, I'm gonna give you a push and you pull, okay? One, two, three. Touch the pillow and you can lay back. Okay. Now we will watch an unassisted roll in the case where the patient is unable to help. Note the provider's wide stance and how she braces her knee with the bed. This helps to reduce workload on the back. Can I help me roll you and put a pillow on me? Okay, I'll raise the bed up. Can you check to see if the bed is locked? Yep, it is. That's good. 
That's good? Yep. So first we're going to pull you towards me, and then and then I'm going to turn you onto your side. Katie will hold you while I put the pillow underneath. Can you put your arms on your chest? Thank you. One, two, three. Ready? And I'm just going to hold on here and give you a little pull when Tiffany gives me the count. One, two, three. Okay, and back we go. When you are moving a patient to a sitting position, start with the patient laying on their side as shown previously. If they are able, instruct the patient to help push off the bed. When getting a patient out of bed with one assist, ensure the patient is able to follow directions and is predictable. Prepare the environment, including the chair. If you are using a wheelchair, make sure the brakes are locked. You will start with the patient in a sitting position as shown previously. In the following video, note how the provider blocks the patient's feet with her own and communicates clearly with the patient. Hi, Mrs. King. I'd like to get you up to the chair. Is that okay? Sure. All right. First thing, I'm going to have you scoot to the edge of the bed so that your feet are on the ground. Then I'm going to put my feet in front of yours. I'm going to put my hands underneath your arms, and I'm going to pull up. At the same time, I want you to push off the bed, okay? All right. On the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Good. Now pivot towards the chair. Reach your hands back to feel the handles of the chair before you sit. Okay, good. Mrs. King, Katie and I are going to help move you into the chair. Is that okay? Yes. When a two-person assist is needed to move a patient out of bed, preparation is key. Watch all tubes, lines, and drains and identify who will lead. Let's watch. Katie, can you take that side and I'll take this side? Sure. Can you scoot to the edge of the bed and put your feet on the floor? <clears throat> on the count of three, we're going to help you lift, stand up, and then you're going to turn and sit in the chair behind me. Okay, Mrs. King? Yep. One, two, three. You walk over with us. Grab the arms of the chair before you sit down. By placing their feet in front of the patients, the providers help to stabilize the transfer. When moving a patient from a bed to a stretcher, multiple staff members are required. Adjust the height of the bed so that it is slightly higher than the stretcher. Ensure that both the stretcher and bed are locked. Roll the patient to one side to place the slide board underneath. Place the patient's feet on the slide board before moving. To start, move patient only halfway, then readjust. Check on the patient's comfort and the safety of any tubes, lines, or drains. Pausing halfway also allows for keeping the load close to the body and prevents overextending the arms, shoulders, and spine. Let's watch. Hi, Mrs. King. We're going to take you down to x-ray. To do that, I'm going to put you on this stretcher. I have Tiffany and Laura here to help me, and we're just going to slide you across, okay? Okay. So I'm going to lower your head down. Tiffany, could you make sure that the bed is locked? Yes. We're going to raise the bed up. the stretcher? Sure. All right, and then would you mind going over to help Tiffany sure. have Mrs. King roll over onto her side? And you know what, could you please lift the bed up just a touch more? Tell me when. That looks good. Okay, we're going to turn you towards us, and then we'll put the slide board underneath you, and then I'm going to slide you over. One, two, three. back onto your back. And then Laura, if you want to come back onto my side, you can help me pull. And we'll go on the count of three, okay? Ready? One, 
two, three. Halfway. And then ready? One, two, three. If a patient's knees buckle, do not try to catch them. Rather, guide them down your body, down your leg, to a sitting position, protecting their head. Mrs. King, are you okay? I think so. I fell out of the chair. Did you hit your head? No. Are you sure? Is anything hurting? No. All right, let me help get you up off the floor and we'll check you out, okay? When assisting a patient from the floor to the chair, identify a leader and communicate the plan. For a patient who can bear weight and who has not hit their head, the following video demonstrates proper technique using three people to get them to a chair. Katie, Laura, can you help me please? Sure. Mrs. King ah. slipped out of the chair. She did not hit her head. Okay. Can you please help me get her up in the chair so that we can assess her? Sure. sure. Laura, can you take help with the chair? Absolutely. Katie, can you help me lift her up off the sure. floor? Sure. Mrs. King, do you think you'll be able to put some weight onto your legs? Yeah. Okay. Let's sit you up. And put your legs in front of you. Bend your knees up. And we're going to help lift you and then get you in the chair behind you. Laura's going to slide the chair behind you, okay? One, two, three. If the patient cannot bear weight, you will need to get extra help and communicate a clear plan. Furthermore, in the case of an unwitnessed fall, assess the patient for a head or neck injury. And if applicable, activate the inpatient code head bleed. Do not try to move a patient who has hit their head or if head injury is unknown. Instead, instruct the patient to remain calm and still until the team arrives. Stay with the patient. There are five common errors that are known to cause injury. The first is poor planning. Second, letting the patient put their arms around your neck. Third is poor grip. Fourth, reaching and twisting. And lastly, trying to support a falling patient. In conclusion, the healthcare team plays a vital role in the mobility of our patients. Use the posture techniques seen in this video to help keep your patient and yourself free from injury. Always communicate the plan with both the patient and those assisting before acting. Never hesitate to ask another team member for help. Safety is our number one priority.